Sometimes in the various Halo games, things load in in a specific way that the player isn't supposed to see what's going on. Or sometimes the game will utilize smoke and mirrors type techniques to make things appear a certain way even though some goofy stuff is happening in the background. So what is exactly going on and are there ways to break the restrictions that are supposed to stop players from seeing these things? Well, let's take a closer look. But before we jump into it, this video is sponsored by Blockbuster at Home, Blockbuster's streaming service. Just kidding, could you imagine if we somehow managed to get a Blockbuster brand deal in 2023? No, but real talk, Luke and I really love getting to make the content that we make on this channel on a regular basis, but there are other topics that we think are incredibly interesting that we've always wanted to cover, which for a really long time has kind of trapped us in a creative box. We don't wanna just force a change of the type of content we make onto our audience, and we also don't want to mess up this platform where we can't make Halo content anymore. So for the last few months, Luke and I have been working double at trying to continue to make Rocket Sloth content regularly and also work on our brand new channel, Rocket One. There's so many things we want to cover from the late 90s into the early 2000s that were just really wild. We want to do them in a similar style to what we've done while also trying different things out as well. So if you're just here for the Halo stuff, stick around and we appreciate your support here at Rocket Sloth. But if you've ever liked our type of content and wanted to see how we cover other interesting topics, maybe consider checking out our new channel. We rebranded our podcast channel, Rocket One. We launched three videos yesterday on the channel for our kind of fresh start to the channel. One of them's talking about Blockbuster's failed streaming service. And then there's these other videos too that are really, really cool. So after this video is done, maybe you can head over and check it out. Otherwise, back to the video. Now for this video, we decided to approach this from the perspective of using no mods whatsoever, just the things that are allowed in the games themselves. But fortunately, with tools like Acrophobia and Theater Mode, there's a lot of things you've never seen before in these Halo games that you're not supposed to see that you can see with some of these tricks. Like for instance, on Halo 3's Crow's Nest, there's these cutscenes where we see Miranda Keys talking on the big teleprompter television thing, and that's neat and all. But if you play around with the loading sequences in this game by loading in certain sections and backtracking a bit, you can actually locate where these scenes are being filmed where Miranda Keys is loaded into a pelican way out of bounds of the hangar. This is obviously hidden away here because Bungie never expected any players to actually go and find this, but if you want to even take it a step further in co-op mode, if one player is standing around Miranda Keys or behind her, they will in fact show up on the TV screen as long as you've loaded everything properly and did the backtracking correctly. You can get some pretty funny moments like this. In Halo Reach's Tip of the Spear, I was messing around in theater mode trying to get footage of the Zealot Elite and there were these weird civilians that just spawned in here. There's two of them and they start standing there for a bit and then they just instantly are replaced with two completely different models of dead civilians. And I thought that was really weird. Then upon closer inspection, one of them looked really familiar after his face changed and I couldn't figure out what it was at first, but I later realized that it was actually, seems to be a face modeled after Marcus Leto. He's the former creative director at Bungie. He also had his face plastered onto those monkeys in Halo 3 and ODST, which was a part of some inside email joke that would be sent around the Bungie offices, apparently. I don't know. This is something that nobody probably ever sees, but it is an interesting little thing tucked away in Halo Reach. In the first level of Halo 3, the loading sequences of this game require that Sergeant Johnson makes his way across this bridge after the Pelican crash, and he's kind of baiting the brutes away and if you actually follow him because you can fly up to him fast enough or you watch this occur in theater mode you'll see him just run across the bridge run through the cave with some marines and then despawn we're definitely not supposed to just watch that despawn happen but if you want to take it a step further in acrophobia mode you know the skull where you can fly if you fly and load the next segment before sergeant johnson actually gets to that despawn section the cutscene will play out a little bit differently as Sergeant Johnson's not there, and it will softlock your game. But yeah, I don't think this version of the cutscene's supposed to play. I think Sergeant Johnson's supposed to be there doing his thing, but you know, it was, uh, it was a little awkward. On the great journey in Halo 2, the game definitely does not want you to see Sergeant Johnson actually inside the Scarab piloting it. For instance, if you board the Scarab and you head down 
to the inside section, there's a shield door blocking off the indoor part so you wouldn't ever get close enough to see Sergeant Johnson controlling it. But as we know, there is a glitch in Halo 2 that lets you completely see through the surfaces of the Scarab by jumping down in the front and walking forward here. And we can see that Sergeant Johnson is not, in fact, in this Scarab. Yeah, I guess this one <laughs> isn't as hype, but yeah, they, they didn't want you to see that he's not in there even though he's supposed to be in there. And sure enough, he's not. Also in Halo 2, you may have heard legends that there was supposed to be a cut Warthog run on Halo 2's big finale with Master Chief driving for his life or something, kind of like the end of Combat Evolved in Halo 3, and it may have gotten cut last minute. Well, now that Halo 2 has the Acrophobia Skull, if you're playing on anniversary graphics, you can actually fly out of bounds over to the side here, and by looking at the right angle, you can see where the Warthog run would have been in either this level or the next level, depending on how the loads would have worked. It was all structured out and then just made invisible in the original Halo 2. However, when they were doing the anniversary graphics, they didn't texture this model because it wasn't in the actual game. So we can see kind of the blank space where that Warthog run would have been. It just goes to show how close this thing probably was into making its way into the final cut of the game. On the beginning of the level of the arc, if you're specifically player two in co-op mode, for whatever reason, when you're flying into the sandy area that you usually see, whatever reason, player two just starts off seeing into the cutscene room that played earlier. We have no idea why this happens. We think it's related mostly to something weird going on in the Master Chief collection, but it is a thing for whatever reason. Okay, but then to make this one even more interesting, while we do know this is the cutscene room briefly shown during this two-player adventure, if you pull this clip up in theater mode and you push over to these rocks just outside of the Pelican, you can press Y, Y, and you can actually clip your camera into the cutscene room itself. It's hidden inside of these rocks, interestingly enough. Now, it's a pretty simple Covenant-looking room. Obviously, it takes place on one of the Covenant cruisers. I can't help but to wonder if some of this geometry was reused on the level Cortana itself, but it seems like with most of Halo 3, all of the cutscenes are rendered in-game. So just like the one on Crow's Nest, it's likely that there is specific locations on most maps hiding where the cutscene takes place if it doesn't take place in the map section itself. This is just one example, and Boundary Break actually did a really cool video where they looked at some of the other cutscene rooms, so definitely check out their video as well if you haven't already watched it just because looking at like the cutscene room from the Covenant, for example, is pretty cool too. Also, while we're at it, General Kid has done some pretty interesting things and have shown off some really interesting things over on his channel. So always a huge shout out to General Kid because we really do appreciate his content and the types of investigations he has done. But he's shown off some really interesting things like some of the secret cutscene rooms. And also you can see what some of the cutscenes from the Halo 3 campaign look like if the FOV is at maximum. But while we were on the Arc, there were a few other interesting things we found along the way. You know the part on the arc where you press the button and the light bridge comes and, and we see the humans drive across the bridge? I've always, since I was a kid, wanted to go down there and just explore what was going on down there. I know it's not supposed to be that deep, they just kind of open up a door on the other side and they all drive out anyways, but there was just something about the fact that they were so close but so far away, I always wanted to get over there. And with Acrophobia, we finally can almost. Okay, this one's a little sad. There's a death barrier literally the second you touch the ground. Like they really don't want you getting over here. We found we could stand on these little railings up here. That was okay. But if we got too close to the ground, that was it. We found that it's even more interesting that you can fly literally right up to the tanks or the warthogs and get the Marines to get out and even jump in the vehicles for a second. And since MCC transfers your vehicle skin into the campaign for a while, unless Unless a marine jumps in, you can actually recolor some of the vehicles. At first, Dim managed to figure out the exact distance of the kill barrier and was able to stay alive by standing at the tippy top of the tank, which was something kind of cool. So you can, to an extent, stand down here as long as you're not touching the floor. It's like the floor is lava, but in Halo and there's vehicles. We did end up accidentally causing a little bit of a traffic jam. So when we pressed the button to activate the bridge, one of the tanks decided just to go for it. And uh, yeah, it just did this on its own. It was kind of hilarious. Then underneath this area where the vehicles are, I was curious to see like what was by the door, I guess. And I found a little platform I could stand on way back in here in this little room. And I thought to myself, I wonder how many Halo players over the course of Halo 3's existence have ever stood in this exact place that 
that I'm standing. I mean, modding and hacking's existed for a while, and acrophobia has been introduced for a little over a year and a half now, but I can assume probably not too many players have stood in this exact spot, which to me was kind of profound. But Elijah, what about across the bridge? What's over there? Well, we decided to check that too, and interestingly enough, where the vehicles drive into is this big open area. Now, at first we were like, why does this area have to be so big? They can kind of just hide it behind the doors. Why does it have to wrap down and kind of have this decline? But if you think about it, there are a lot of vehicles that they have to kind of make room for, so having that extra room makes it so there's not this weird, awkward traffic jam that you're witnessing from up above. But we did look carefully. It doesn't look like there's actually an exit or anything like that that these vehicles typically go through before they appear in the next area. What it seems to do is once you load ahead into the next area, the game will despawn or at least will just load in copy and paste versions of the vehicles that were in that previous area. So when the doors opened in the outside section where you go into the scarab fight, we noticed we only had two tanks and they didn't have our skins on them, so they likely were new tanks, but the game did account for the one tank that had oofed itself just a few moments earlier and then chose not to spawn then because it was supposed to be dead. There were some really interesting out of bounds sections over by where the scarab fight typically happens that used to be way harder to do before the introduction of acrophobia. So firstly, we found that we can kind of dip through this little hole in the wall and access the back side of this massive structure. You can even see through some of the walls. There's some things that don't have platforms on them, even though they probably should. And at one point, Luke and I fell into this weird invisible gravity well or something. We could not get out of it for the life of us and we ended up getting stuck and we tried to kill each other to get out, but we couldn't. Uh, the timing wasn't the best there, but we ended up resetting and had to play through the part of the level again. But this whole area in itself is pretty cool and you're not supposed to go there for sure. But then another little area that I always was curious about was this door where these jackals sometimes spawn in. The door closes usually right after the jackals run out and you can't actually get in there usually unless you're really quickly but we were prepared and we were quick and we got into this room and it's a pretty basic room there's not much going on except i do have to say the interior of this room doesn't share the same textures and wall design that the other interiors of this level have it's just kind of this black cement type wall that's not, you know, the cooler design we see on the arc typically. But yeah, it's a neat little room. There's not much going on here, but it exists. On Floodgate, you can actually see some really interesting things that you're probably not supposed to see if you're flying around in the theater mode of the game. But yeah, on the inside section, there's this Marine who usually gets attacked by a bunch of little Flood dudes. But if you skip here ahead in theater mode, you can actually see the Flood just spawn in from the sky, almost like they're just always sitting there ready to jump him at the right moment. Also, I found it interesting in theater mode, if you look at the Arbiter when he's like not player two, but that campaign companion that you have, you can see that his energy sword that's holstered still occasionally has the outline of the full sword despite him having his active camo. This isn't really that breaking of a thing, but it is still kind of interesting to look at. On Coastal Highway, you can do an out of bounds glitch with Acrophobia, or you can technically do this glitch without Acrophobia, but if you go into theater mode or you just fly out of bounds. If you cross the ocean right here and you go all the way over to all of this debris, you can find a random truck. But upon further inspection, this truck is actually made out of crates. It's not a real truck. It's just kind of funny to look at. There's a pretty fun glitch that you can do on Exodus where if you grab armor lock and you have acrophobia, you can armor lock on top of the spirit. And as the spirit is flying away, you can glitch through the barrier. And if you fly quick enough to this tower right here, you won't dive to the soft barrier, and you have full access to fly around the entire area of Exodus. Now obviously you're not supposed to see New Alexandria like this, there's a lot of holes in the city as the parts of the level haven't loaded in just yet, so while you weren't supposed to see this section of the level, it's still pretty cool to take a closer look at nonetheless. And then in Halo Combat Evolved, if you jump on top of the pelican at the very beginning of the level, you can fly out of bounds and make this jump just to this little section that you're not normally supposed to access. And if you travel through the trees for quite some time, you can find a random Marine just standing here. He's like a placeholder for some reason. We've talked about him before, but yeah, he's always just been pretty intriguing nonetheless. Also on Exodus, 
if you fly through the level very quickly and then go into theater mode to go ahead of where the player itself is, you can see that this phantom flies in and drops off shade turrets. Now what's interesting is when I was watching this happen in theater mode, I found that the shade turret landed in a really weird position. Like it wasn't quite level with the ground just yet. However, when my player got closer to where that shade turret was, I could actually see that the position of the shade turret reset to pre-decided coordinates. So in other words, it just snapped into place very suddenly, but it was interesting to see this happen in real time while spectating it through theater mode. This next one's really easy to do and probably really pointless, but if you're in acrophobia mode or you jump over the walls or you have theater on the level of the covenant at the end section, you can bypass some load zones that are required to end the level in this last stretch on the run back, which means you can drop down into this little elevator shaft that you typically do in a cutscene and find that there's nothing down here. It's just a dead end where you kind of break your legs. Still, technically, you're not supposed to ever see the bottom of the elevator shaft to find that there is nothing down here. So there is that. On Halo 2's quarantine zone, there was a lot to unpack here and we had never fully explored the whole gondola section of this level before, but we discovered stuff we had no idea even existed in this level, like a brand new room even. Now it already started off really interesting. We were on the gondola and we realized, hey, now that we can use acrophobia, we can just like fly over to these little platforms where the flood normally attacks us from and just see what it looks like, see what's going on. And we actually did that and there's some weird physics that go on with the gondola where it either will push or pull you or do some weird stuff when you're flying around. It's kind of neat but also a little weird when you feel like you're going really slow and the gondola is just zooming. We also took a moment and restarted to the beginning of the gondola section to fly backwards to see what the opening area of the level kind of looked like and we got to look at where the gondola typically launches from. There's this button that's just here that I think is the button you normally press for the gondola but it's just floating here and when we press it, it makes a sound, but uh, nothing happens. It's kind of like that one gondola button secretly on Delta Halo. That's obviously for the regret gondola, but it's there in Delta Halo and everyone wondered about it for years. Same idea. We even took some time to fly over to the in amber clad ship, which was just kind of parked over here because technically during all of this, Keys and Johnson are also running to the library to try to get the icon. And while there's not really much going on here, it's not an actual structure as you can just kind of fly through it, we did find that this early section of the gondola area was really interesting. And then all of a sudden the gondola had hit a point when it was moving and we were exploring where it loaded in the next part of the level and we were still in the back part of the level and some weird stuff started happening. Like for instance, this entire area that we were by the gondola switch became dark all of a sudden and we had no idea what was going on. We were really confused because it was dark. And upon further inspection, we realized that for whatever reason, when the game is loading the second half of the gondola section, it actually loads in kind of these ceilings and floor enclosing the entire gondola section from earlier on in the level where we were still exploring. So all of a sudden we were in this indoor section, which was really weird. And to make it even more interesting, if we switch to anniversary graphics, it seemed like we were still out in the open, which is kind of how we got a grasp of where we even were during all of this, because it got really confusing and disorienting when we were just kind of all of a sudden somewhere completely different looking than where we were just moments before. We also found this one little spot where it seems like the loads between each section of the level load in and unload depending on where you pass through. So by us standing and kind of sidestepping, we could pass in and out of the load side to side. It's a little confusing how Halo 2 works. I'm pretty sure if it had to load one more section after this, it would deload us if we were in the back section completely and get us just kind of stuck in the void and we would have to reset because we had something similar to that happen earlier on while we were exploring this area. So after that, we reverted and we continued to explore the gondola ride section, this time sticking a little closer to the gondola itself. But another interesting thing we found is, of course, while you're riding the gondola, this whole level is supposed to be this race between the elites and the humans trying to get to the sacred icon. And as we know, Keys and Johnson are supposed to be going for it. And you can see another gondola on the front right side ahead of you making its way up to the sacred icon. So we thought, hey, let's go over there. So we flew over to the other gondola and we were able to actually ride on it. It's a fully working normal gondola, except the flood's not trying to murder you. It was kind of interesting. The structure is a little bit different and we got to watch the other gondola from a window. This phantom was doing some weird stuff we thought was weird. 
And after a few moments of that, our gondola just despawned randomly, so we were a little disoriented in where we were. We tried flying ahead, and we did find the library and the end section of the level. And hey, look, that gondola does actually arrive here. For whatever reason, whenever we play this level, we've never stopped to look at the other gondola and see like the dead marines and stuff in the area. But yeah, the other gondola is always there. I just, I don't know. Am I the only person who just never paid too much attention? Nonetheless, we're here at the end section of the level. We went ahead and tried to fly around a little bit without triggering the thing, but then we triggered the end of the level anyways. And that was kind of that when it came for Quarantine Zone. But still, it was an overall pretty awesome experience just getting to take a closer look at this level and seeing all the interesting things that we haven't gotten to see up close just yet. In Halo Reach on the level Long Night of Solace, towards the end of the level, when you're in the final firefight, there's this pelican that you can kind of shove your head into the side of, and while doing that, if you press and hold your enter vehicle button, you can jump into the driver's seat of the pelican and shoot the turret. You can't really fly the pelican or anything, but yeah, you're definitely not supposed to be in here. We've talked about this glitch before, but it becomes relevant later on, so I just kind of wanted to iterate that. But Long Night of Solace in general is one of those levels that we haven't put as much time into exploring too much. We did do some out of bounds exploration all the way back in 2020, well before Acrophobia was added into the game. And outside of that, we hadn't really spent too much time glitching out of this map, especially the early section, which was what we wanted to really take a closer look at and explore now that we could just fly around. The problem was the things on this early section of this level weren't working the way that we typically expect them to or expected them to. Typically we can easily break out of bounds by armor locking or spamming the bubble shield on top of a spirit while it flies out through the barrier that stops players from passing and that lets you clip through, giving you free reign to fly around on the out of bounds section. Though it seemed like the spirit wasn't really complying, flying high enough to push us through the barrier, instead it would just push us off of the spirit because it didn't go quite high enough. No big deal, we were actually doing the trick wrong. Originally how we would do the trick is we would use the pelican that flies in and just do the same trick on top of that. It would bump us through and we would be able to explore. So what happened when we tried this? The, the pelican just didn't show up. I don't know what we're doing wrong, or maybe this is some weird change that has randomly happened to Halo and no one else has noticed, but we've tried multiple times on this level to get this weird pelican to spawn in so that we could try to glitch out of the map, and for whatever reason, the pelican just never showed up. We tried killing all the enemies, we tried changing the difficulty, we tried pushing inside the building and then running out again. No luck. For whatever reason, this pelican just would not show up for the life of us. So we're kind of left with this mystery that we don't know why the Pelican's not here. So we want to turn this around to you guys. If anyone out there is really good at doing some of the tricks, if you guys can figure out what triggers that Pelican to spawn in that we know has existed before, it's not some weird Mandela effect because we have footage of us doing the trick in MCC on Reach. If anyone can help us figure this one out, that'd be really awesome. But yeah, as far as outside exploration went, it wasn't going all that well. I did find that you can go inside of the building from the outside and flying through the giant hole that's over here. And that was kind of cool, I guess. There wasn't really too much going on once you get inside, but I do think it might be slightly faster than actually waiting at the door to open maybe and load. I don't know, it's probably about the same speed. It's not a massive time save, I think. But here was another thing we found. Since this level, we just kind of realized this is the level countdown for multiplayer. We explored a little bit down here. We went outside to the little landing area and a pelican is there getting ready for takeoff. All these marines are loading up on it. And we thought this would be another great place to try to do the trick so we could get out of bounds and explore this level. So two things happen. Luke tried doing the trick and no matter what he tried to do, the pelican would just bounce him off even though he was doing the trick seemingly correctly. And then I thought, hey, this is the same level that has that pelican at the end of it. Why wouldn't this pelican here also work. So I spent a ton of time trying to shove my head in the side of the pelican to jump inside of the turret like we can at the end of the level and uh yeah that also does not work here either. I don't know it's something about the pelicans in this game they're very weird for whatever reason like sometimes they're your best friends and sometimes they're not. There's an easter egg you can do on New Alexandria that lets you straight up fly a pelican. Sometimes you get to shoot a pelican like we do in the back end of this level or it just doesn't let us do anything like in this front half of the level. And then on Exodus, if you do a glitch out of bounds at the end section of the level, you can fly through a barrier once again, and you can find a pelican out of bounds that you can even sit in, and that pelican has seats for whatever reason. This one doesn't fly anywhere, but look, you can sit down. 
So I don't know what's going on with the Pelicans in Halo Reach. But yeah, if anyone can figure out what's going on with that first Pelican once again, I, I would really appreciate the help. Then we can go over to Halo 4 on the level Infinity. Now, when it comes to Acrophobia, Halo 4 is the newest game to get Acrophobia. And while we've speed run stuff, just trying to go as fast as possible, we haven't really taken too much time to stop, sniff the roses, see the weird oddities. We thought Infinity's second half of the level would be really interesting to look at. First of all, in the open area where you normally drive a tank through, you do have a lot of open rain to fly around and look around. But what was really interesting was when we got to the inside section where we're like in the ship, or whatever. If you just fly up into these rafters, this huge area back here is despawned, which essentially lets you get out of the infinity or to the little outer bounds area, kind of within the walls of the infinity. Now, this was interesting. There was a lot of areas that we could kind of move up along and even trigger spawns, despite the fact we weren't really in the map. And the whole weirdness of clipping through and not through walls was kind of fascinating to us. I don't know, this area was just really interesting to explore, but things that even more interesting when we got to the part where the mantis normally spawns in we made dim go back inside the map to trigger the level like normally and he spawned in the mantis and we were able to watch the mantis from the out of bounds area rise up in its little elevator thing but we got to see it before dim got to see it so technically we saw the mantis earlier than anyone else had we were pretty much the equivalent of someone who waits for a new show to drop on netflix or something and skips to the end of the episode the moment that it comes out to see what happens so that they know ahead of of everyone else watching at the time that the episode that came out the ending before anyone else did it's pretty pointless but hey that was us for a few seconds now here's where things get even more interesting the whole mantis hallway section opens up and we were able to fly ahead despite the fact you're supposed to bring the mantis and you're typically supposed to hit all the loads and or the wall at the end won't be able to break and you won't be able to progress up the elevator however since we were already out of bounds i was able just to fly straight up the elevator through the wall and it triggered the load for the next half of the level despite the fact we hadn't even done the whole section correctly and because we didn't do it correctly i think it partially broke the level where part of it wanted to load so it was playing like high action-packed music and there was even some dialogue associated with some stuff going on even though we were at the end outdoor section of the level the only problem was we were stuck here there was a bunch of invisible walls there was walls we were on the wrong side of we could not for the life of us figure out how to maneuver this section and it looked like nothing was loading in so we definitely had soft lock ourselves at this point but I think we were more focused on the fact that we were stuck here and we still wanted to explore this area even if we were soft locked that we wanted to continue on and try to find a way around this so we tried glitching through this mess of invisible barriers and a ton of soft kill barriers where they give you the little 10 second countdown before it auto kills you we tried wiggling our way out to the left we tried wiggling our way out to the right we wrapped all the way around under the map back up and around when when the timer was counting down and had a couple of really close calls and a few deaths. We found this invisible ceiling all the way up here that seems to just make it a lot harder than it needs to be. And then after we were getting kind of close to wanting to give up, somehow Dim just found a way to get back into the map. He had no idea how he did it. And then we died and respawned on him and we had access to fly straight to him like that invisible barrier randomly despawned. And then we were here in the outside section where you normally have a mantis firefight and you have to do some stuff with some Mac cannons or something, but those weren't even loaded in. The ship actually looks a little bit funny when it's only half loaded in the way that it was. There's some invisible stuff you can kind of stand on that's supposedly something that would load in here maybe later. And there even were weapons still around on the ground that did load in. So whatever we were doing here was definitely not something anyone's supposed to typically see, but it did lead to a really interesting and unique moment we had never seen before in a Halo game. So that definitely was a plus. In Halo Infinite, when the game first launched, you could use your grappling hook at the end of the second level and climb your way up all the way to the very top of this elevator shaft where you normally have a boss fight and you could kind of see out of the map and that was cool. You definitely weren't supposed to climb all the way up here. Then, while we were probably the only people to make content explaining that this elevator shaft led to nowhere because outside of our video where we initially looked at it, there was no purpose to going up here whatsoever. It did end up getting patched and they added a little lid to the top of this elevator shaft. Still pretty sure you're not supposed to climb all the way up here. Also in the indoor levels, I found myself grappling alongside the walls in Halo Infinite, bypassing this whole gondola section. And I got all the way to the next section of the level, which I clearly wasn't supposed to do out of sequence. 
and I caused my game to crash. But yeah, I wasn't supposed to see this area at that time that I did and hit that load zone, which caused everything to fall apart. But it was kind of interesting to see this whole room in a way you're not supposed to by not using the gondola. So what did you think? Did we find anything interesting you had no idea about? Let us know in the comments down below. Also, huge shout out to our patrons for making this series even possible. January and February are always scary months for ad revenue, so we really appreciate y'all helping us out and making this content. If you want to join up and become a patron, check out the link down below. A couple dollars goes a really long way in funding our projects. Or of course, you can use code Rocket Sloth Gamer Subs. Code Rocket Sloth Gamer Subs. Code Rocket Sloth Gamer Subs.